So I was thinking of using one of those power line ethernet adapters, the ones that you can plug right into your electrical outlet to get the internet. I always thought that was a pretty cool solution if you wanna have hardwired internet access in a spot that doesn't get a good Wi-Fi signal, for example. We've got a house that is partially wired with Cat5 internet. However, whoever did the wiring never wired the Cat5 to our bonus room upstairs, which is kind of our entertainment room. Now, I've got a two access point Wi-Fi setup, similar to a mesh network. So Wi-Fi isn't really an issue per se, we have a pretty good coverage throughout the house. However, I recently purchased a PS5 and I also did a video on that a couple weeks ago if you want to check that out and see my impressions. But I put the PS5 in the basement and I've got it hardwired into our gigabit internet connection. I honestly wouldn't dream of trying to game over Wi-Fi and I'm a casual gamer. It's just that if you can get your system plugged in to a hard line, you absolutely should. You want a solid, reliable connection when you're gaming, or at least as reliable as you can make it. Anyways, so I hooked up the PS5 and that got me thinking, what to do with my PS4? Well, my son, who is now three and a half, is starting to get into video games. So I figured I would bring the PS4 upstairs to the bonus room and have it there for him and I to play some of the fun kids games that are out there. We've been making our way through the Spyro Reignited trilogy recently and we've been having a blast. But from time to time, I can also play some other games like Rocket League and NHL 21. And the PS4 is still a very capable gaming console. And so I'll be able to play all sorts of those games upstairs as well. But that's when I realized I have no hardwired internet connection upstairs. I connected the system to Wi-Fi, but I couldn't even connect it to the five gigahertz network that we have. The PS4, at least the original model, was only capable of connecting to the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi network. And I have a dual band router, which sends out both a five gigahertz and a 2.4 gigahertz frequency. So I could definitely connect my PS4 to the network, but sadly, while the 2.4 gigahertz frequencies actually have a wider range, the speed available is just dramatically slower. I ran a speed test on my PS4 and it was honestly pitiful. I didn't even grab a screenshot, it was just so bad. I think I was getting eight megabits down and less than one megabits up. I'm sure I could have tweaked some wireless settings to get a bit more speed, but I knew it, it just wasn't gonna be worthwhile. I had to get a hardwired connection somehow. The problem is running a Cat5 cable to any given spot in your house can be expensive and time consuming. I was looking for an easy solution here. That's when I stumbled upon this wire cutter article, the best power line networking adapter for 2021. They recommended the TP-Link TLPA9020P version three. It's a great name, right? But then I scrolled down and noticed they had an alternate recommendation, the TrendNet TMO311C2K. It sends data through your coaxial cables in your home, also known as the TV cable connections. I honestly had never thought of doing this, though it makes perfect sense. According to Wirecutter, in their tests, this technology provided faster speeds than power line networking. However, it wasn't their main recommendation for the simple reason that we generally just have more power outlets in our homes than coaxial connections. But luckily for me, I have a coaxial connection in my bonus room, so I was in business. Now, I've provided a link in the description to this product on Amazon. You'll probably see if you do some browsing that you can order one unit or two. But it's important to note that if you don't already have one of these in your house, you will want to order two of the units. You need one of these units to plug into your router, then into the nearest coaxial outlet. Then you will need the other unit in the room where you want internet plugged into the coaxial outlet there. This product by TrendNet is part of a technology ecosystem called Mocha or Multimedia Over Coaxial Alliance, which is sort of an industry standard, which means once you have a Mocha device in your house, it's interoperable with more Mocha devices down the line. So for example, you can start with 
two of these units. Then if you want to add another location in your house with the same functionality, you can just order one more unit at a time. Anyways, the setup, as you can imagine, is super easy. Each unit requires power, then you plug the first unit into your router, as well as the coaxial outlet. Then, on the other hand, you plug the unit into the cable outlet, then run an ethernet cable from the box to the actual device you wanna provide a connection to. In my case, the PlayStation 4. The units have three lights on the front, one for the local area network connection, another for Mocha, indicating a link between the two units, and of course, power. If all three of these lights are on, then you're good. All right, so I just ran a speed test on the PlayStation. So it's getting 81 megabits down and it's getting 8.6 megabits up. And that is actually a huge improvement. So huge difference just by plugging in this device. So really, really impressed with that. Now you might be wondering, 81, that's not very great, right? It's, I mean, it's good, but it's not the gigabit internet. If you've watched my video on Shaw gigabit internet, you know that I pay for one gigabit speed and obviously we're not getting it here. Now, a couple things to keep in mind is I know that plugging in this device that runs over the coaxial uh, network in my house is never gonna get me at the same type of speeds as if I just run it over the ethernet connection. So there's gonna be some kind of loss in speed there no matter what, it's just not gonna be as fast. The other thing to consider though is this is on the PlayStation network. And for some reason, anytime I do a speed test on, on the PlayStation uh, network itself, uh, it's always slower than if I do a speed test uh, on another device. And that's probably just the fact that it's uh, routing to uh, different servers that aren't local. So what we're gonna do next is run the speed test on my computer to see what we get through this coax network. We're on the computer, we got plugged in to the internet. So let's see what kind of speeds we get. Okay, 93. and 94 upload speed. That's kind of unusual to have a little higher upload speed than your download speed, but uh, yeah, interesting. So really it's not that much faster as far as the download speed. Upload speed is way faster, but download speed, yeah, not, not a ton faster there. So anyways, 93, listen, that is a lot better than we were getting before in this spot right here, just because the Wi-Fi doesn't reach too well over here. And obviously we will take 93, uh, over what we're getting before, for sure. All right, so what's the takeaway here? Overall, I'm pretty happy. I've been using this setup for a week or so now, and I haven't had any issues with reliability, and the connection has been speedy enough for my application. At the end of the day, if you want the absolute best connection, then neither Mocha or Powerline adapters will be a suitable replacement for just running Cat 5 or 6 ethernet cables through the walls. But if you want a solid and reliable connection that's still pretty fast, this solution works really well. Let me know if you've tried this type of thing before, either the coaxial Mocha option or the power line adapters. What was your experience? I've heard that results can be mixed, especially with power line adapters, so I'm curious. If you enjoyed the video, click that like button so that more people can find this content and subscribe if you wanna see more Technology Paul. I post videos every single Friday. Thanks, and we'll see you in the next one.